The main implementation of IPFS, Kubo, previously known as GoIPFS, exposes an HTTP API that you can use to interrupt with an IPFS node programmatically. Basically, it allows you to use the IPFS CLI commands through an HTTP API. Although you can directly send HTTP requests to the API, in this tutorial we are going to use a Go client. First, in a command line terminal, start a new IPFS node, which is going to expose the API. Then, make sure that you have Go installed, and if you don't have it already, clone the Launchpad Tutorials repository, which contains the templates that you will use in this tutorial. You will also need the public key of your IPFS node. You can list it by using the IPFS key command. To modify the Go code, I will use Visual Studio code, but any other IDE is OK. First, I will open the Launchpad Tutorials repository. The IPFS Go client folder contains two subfolders. In the app subfolder, you will find a template to complete. I will also open the integrated terminal of Visual Studio, where the code will be executed. As you can see, there are several functions to be implemented. The main function calls the helper functions and handles the results. The first thing we do in the main function is creating a new client. The new shell function returns a client that contains all the methods to interact with the IPFS node. As a parameter, we provide the URL of the IPFS API with the default port. Now that we have the client, we can pass it to the different helper functions to create, read and download an IPFS file. Now we are going to complete the add file function, which will create a new file with the text that we pass as a parameter. First, we remove the comment and we use the add method of the client, which returns the CID of the file if added correctly to IPFS. If not, an error is returned. We have to provide a reader to the add method. In Go, you can create a reader from an external file or a string. In this case, we are creating a reader from a string. Now we can move on to the next function. To read the file, we use the cat method of the shell. We have to provide the IPFS path, which contains the CID of the file we are looking for. The cat method returns two parameters, a reader and an error. In the case of an error, the error variable will be populated. In our code, if the error variable is populated, we stop reading the file and we return an empty string. The reader is an abstraction for the content of a file. Therefore, we have to go from a reader to a string. First, we take the bytes from the reader by using a helper function. Again, we check for errors. In the case of an error, we stop the flow of the program and we return an empty string. Finally, we convert the bytes to a string and we return the text variable. Now we can move on to the next function. To download the file, we use the get method from the shell, which expects two parameters, the CID of the file and the path in your local computer where the file will be stored. This code template contains a constant where you can set your local path. In my case, I'm going to use the documents folder. In the next function, we are going to publish an IPNS record. To publish the record, we use the publish with details method from the client, which expects five parameters. The first parameter is the CID of the file. The second one is the public key of your IPFS node. The third one is the amount of time that the record will be valid for. The fourth one is the amount of time that IPNS will cache the record. And the last parameter indicates whether the client should check if the IPNS record already exists. The code template contains a constant where you can set your public key. Just copy and paste your public key here. Next, we are going to create the missing variables. Both variables must be of type duration. I'm going to set the lifetime variable to 50 hours. Therefore, the IPNS record will be valid for 50 hours. 
I'm going to set a TTL variable to one microsecond so that IPNS doesn't cache the record. Setting a low cache time means that if you update the record, it will be replaced immediately. Then we simply store any potential errors in a variable and we return it. Now we can move on to the last function we have to complete. To retrieve the IPFS path stored in an IPNS record, we use the resolve method. We simply pass our public key as a parameter. Now to test the script, I'm going to open the command line terminal and run the Go application. As you can see, the file is added to IPFS and a CID is generated. Then we read the file by using the CID and we verify that the text is correct. The file is downloaded to my local machine and as you can see, publishing the IPNS record takes some time. Finally, we can verify that the IPNS record points to the CID of the file.